Hello. If we're going to learn to solve optimization problems, we're going to need to learn a couple of concepts and a little bit of vocabulary. So let's do that right now. I'm going to keep going back to the, op the lifeguard problem because it's so simple and it's easy to describe. We're certainly going to go far beyond that, but for now let's stick with that. Now go back and look at your notes or the book if you want to know how the, uh, the lifeguard problem is set up. But in words, basically, there's a swimmer in distress in the water and a lifeguard is trying to get to the swimmer in the shortest possible time. Not the shortest distance, the shortest time. And there's a variable, an independent variable, that's where, that describes where the lifeguard gets in the water. And if you plot the time it takes the lifeguard to, to get to the swimmer against the position in which the lifeguard goes from the sand to the water, the curve looks kind of like this. Okay? Right there is the minimum. We'll call that x star. It's 82 or 87.208 meters, I believe. Okay, so this is a picture of the optimization problem. Okay? Anytime you can turn a mathematical expression into a picture, it's a good idea to do that. So this is the thing we're calculating. This is the thing we're trying to minimize. Okay. Minimize this by changing that. Okay. I can make this any value I want, and in, in doing so, I'm going to look for the minimum value of that. In general mathematical terms, that would be called an independent variable. It's something you can change as you want to. In mathematical terms, this would be called a dependent variable. This is, this is dependent on that value. You don't get to change this however you want. This is a function of that, so when you change this, this comes along for the ride. So in, in general mathematical terms, independent variable, dependent variable. Now in the optimization world, these have more specific names. This is okay, but it's not specific enough. It's not tight enough. It's not descriptive enough. Okay. This, the name of this is called the objective function. And this will be, you'll see this in every optimization paper, every optimization book you'll ever see, and we're going to use that term for the rest of the class. The objective function is the thing you're trying to minimize or maximize. Okay? The thing you get to change, this independent variable, this has a, more, a specific name that uh, more relates to what we were doing, and this is called a design variable. Okay. By changing that, the implication is you're changing your design. And you could be changing the design of a process or a product. But that's called a design variable. This is a one design variable problem. Okay. There's only one design variable and there's one objective function. Most practical problems have more than one design variable in them. It's very seldom you see a real world problem that has only one design variable. We start there because they're a good teaching tool. If, if we can get uh, some basic ideas worked out using that single design variable, it'll be easier to move to uh, problems that have more design variables in them. In the engineering world, it's not at all uncommon for uh, problems to have hundreds of design variables. Okay, for right now, we'll start with one. We'll do, do a lot of two design variable problems, too, because we can still plot those. Now, what is this plot called? Well, let me get this. There. Get rid of those. Mathematicians will refer to the, the, the mathematical region defined by the, in, the independent and the dependent variables as a space. Now, this is a pretty abstract term. Is it, does it really describe like a 3D space I can walk through? No, it doesn't. What it does describe is a mathematical space, a conceptual kind of space that you can walk through at least conceptually. If the space has three or fewer dimensions, you can actually draw a picture of it. So this whole thing is called design space. Okay, this, this, everything on this plot, that's design space. I'm drawing a picture of design space. Okay? Now this design space only has two dimensions. And the, the number of dimensions in design space is the number of design variables plus one, because there's one objective function. Now, if you skipped ahead in the book, you'll find out there are such a thing as problems with more than one objective function. 
we will spend the vast majority of our time on problems where there's a single objective function. This is meant to be an introductory class, not an advanced class. So I'll mention it later, but I'll, I'll really only just mention it. Okay, I would encourage you to further your studies after this if you want to. So this is what design space looks like for a single variable problem. What might it look like for a two variable problem? Well, have you ever seen a topographic map of a, of a, of a, a hillside or a, a piece of land? If you haven't seen one before, hikers use these a lot, and they look like this. Right? That's a topographic map. What you're seeing is those, those, those lines, those circles, those closed loops, those represent uh, line, uh, curves of equal height above sea level. So every time you cross one of those lines, you're going either uphill or downhill. Okay? So we're going to draw a two variable problem and it's going to look kind of like that topographic map. Okay, and I'll call that x1 and this x2. Now, I know when you see 2D plots, your instinct is to say x and y, but that's just a convention. And in problems where you really only do have two variables, one independent, one dependent, you probably could really use x and y. Um, for optimization problems, you could easily have hundreds of design variables. Well, there's only 26 letters in the alphabet. You're going to run out. A much more a uh, flexible, much more general way to do this is to set, call these x1, x2, x3, x4, however many you've got. The subscript can be as big as you need it to be. So there's what the, the two design variables, the two independent variables look like. How do you draw the third axis? Well, there's a couple of ways to do it. You can project a 3D surface onto a 2D board. I mean, if you look at me right now, I'm, I sure am 3D and you're looking at me on a 2D screen right now, so apparently that works. So let's, let's draw the equivalent of a topographic map that shows an objective function. And I'm kind of making this up, but let's just say there's some function that we're interested in that looks like this, okay? And we'll put a little plus right there. That little plus, you see that in plots a lot. That indicates the minimum or the maximum. In this case, it's the minimum. Okay, there's x1 star, and there's x2 star. Now, to define the minimum of the objective function, you need two variables, because you need one in the horizontal direction and one in the vertical direction. If this had three design variables, you'd need three numbers to describe the location of the minimum. Now, this really does start to look like a space. And we'll say things like, when we want to start our search for the minimum, we will start at some point in design space. So maybe that could be a starting point. And we'll, work, we'll learn about algorithms that will search through design space and go there. And they may, they'll take a path through design space. But what you're going to do is, you, as you iterate through an algorithm, it'll start stepping through this mathematical space. And by drawing it out on the board, I take a mathematical space and I turn it into basically a physical space. So this is a very powerful tool for learning optimization, learning how to think about the kinds of problems we're going to work on. The problem, this only works with two design variables. I don't know about you, I live in 3D space. So once you get two design variables and an objective function, you've used up all those three dimensions. I don't know what 4D space looks like. I, you know, I can look up things on the internet and I can see the 3D shadow of a 4D hypercube, but I really can't imagine what that looks like. And I certainly can't close my eyes and imagine myself walking through 4D space. Maybe it's just me. So as, as useful as these drawings are, they're limited because they only work in uh, two design variable problems. But the good news is that methods that work in two design variable problems generally work in end of design variable problems. So if it works in a 3D design space, it'll work in any dimension design space. It's not true of the 1D problems in general, 1D methods in general. So there it is in a nutshell. The big ideas are the concept of a design variable. Those are the things you get to change as you wish. And an objective function, the thing that you calculate from your choice of design variables. And this all lives in a, in a function space, a mathematical space called design space and we'll spend a lot of time talking about how to move intelligently through design space. I hope this helps, and I'll see you next time.